Good morning and welcome to the Urbana United Methodist Church, both in person and online service of worship this morning. For those of you worshiping uh, with us online, I hope if you haven't already, you'll take a moment in the comment section and, and greet one another, those that are worshiping with you online. And again, reminder, those of us in person, we can also interact with those online in the same fashion, their cell phones making comments, uh, whether we're using Facebook or YouTube. Then following service this morning, we hope you'll take a moment to extend welcome to the others who've come in person to worship with you as well. If you're new or joining us for the first time, we're glad that you've chosen to worship with us. Certainly hope you'll continue to worship with us in the future. So a special welcome to all of you. And um, at this point, let's check in with Cliff and Molly Meadows and uh, hear about our family ministry update. Good morning, guys, and welcome back to a Sunday Fun Day recap with the whole Meadows clan. <laughs> so last week, we finished our series, High Wire, Daring to Trust, where all month long we learned about trust. This week, we begin our brand new series called Cliffhanger. The story isn't over. <laughs> this series will be learning all about grit, Ooh. which is refusing, refu yeah. <laughs> freezing, no. refusing to give up when life gets hard. And our first main point is hold on because God is with you. Oh. I think it's going to be a good one. Definitely. Yep. Cliffhanger. So last week, the preschoolers finished their series called Always, which was all about feelings and how God still loves us through them all. This week, we begin our new series called Hole in One, <laughs> where, we, where we'll be talking about how God has a plan for us. We begin the story with Noah's Ark, or the series with Noah's Ark, and that we can always trust God's plan. So remember, you guys can always join us downstairs Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m., or online every Sunday evening at 7.15 p.m. I'm six years old! And Riley is six years old, so that's good. Well, we hope you guys have a great week. See you guys. Bye! Bye! All right. Well, um, you know, you never know what to expect when uh, they get all of them together. So uh, I love it. So that's uh, thank you to the Meadows clan for our family ministry update. And uh, I forgot earlier, but let's never forget, God is good all the time. And with that, let us begin our worship uh, and prepare our hearts as Karen leads us in our morning prelude.
Amen. Thank you, Karen, for your ministry of music uh, this morning. And now for those worshiping in person, if you're able, let us continue our worship with our morning responsive call to worship. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed to your glorious name forever, God. May your glory fill the whole earth. Come, let us worship God. To God be the glory, number 98. the glory, great things he has done, so loved he the world that he gave us his son, <clears throat> he yielded his life, not told man for sin, and opened the life gate that all Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this morning, for this opportunity to come together as your family, as the body of Christ, to worship you, to offer our praise, to give you glory, and to remember the difference you make in our lives through the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So send forth your Spirit on all of us as we worship you, that all we do will honor you. And now with the confidence of children of God that us join together in that prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Oh 
All right. Thank you, choir, for your ministry of music this morning. That was wonderful. Thank you very much. And now, as we continue our worship, we want to uh, do so through the generosity of our giving. So you see a slide that shows the various ways that we can support the ongoing work, mission, and ministry of Urbana United Methodist Church. In addition, for those of us worshiping in person, we also have baskets at both entrances, exits, uh, to my right, to your left, and out in the narthex as well. And you may, if you prefer, place your gift there. Now, as we prayerfully consider our response this morning, consider this. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from the message translation, we read this. It says, each person is giving something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it, and everyone benefits. The Apostle Paul then goes on to list the various gifts given out by God. Now, no one individual has all the gifts, but we all have some of those gifts, and maybe some of us just one or two, but we all have been given gifts by God. We are all the recipients of God's grace and gift abilities. And one gift we can all exercise together is the gift of generosity. When we do, when we share a portion of the wealth that God has placed in our hands, Paul says, everyone benefits. As God uses our generosity to do magnificent and wonderful things for others in Jesus' name. So let us gather our gifts together, offer them to God in gratitude and in praise and in support of the work, mission, and ministry of Urbana United Methodist Church. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the difference you make in our lives. We thank you that your word assures us in the, through the prophet Isaiah that you always work on our behalf. We thank you, Father, for the gift of your Son and the gift of your Holy Spirit that empowers us to be your hands and feet to the world around us. So, Father, um, bless these gifts we return to you today. Bless our hands, our feet, our mouths, all that we use for your glory and continue to work through us to extend your kingdom throughout Urbana, Champaign County, and around the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Old Testament, from Psalm 139, verses 13 through 18. Let us all draw near as we hear the word of God. The psalmist says, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body, and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. The word of God for the people of God Thanks be to God. Well, today we continue our series entitled Faith Works. And so far throughout this series, we've talked about how by exercising our faith in the living God, we're not troubled by troubles. We find comfort in crisis. It empowers us to plant seeds of peace 
in the lives of those around us, and it always keeps us hopeful. Pastor Christopher, the last couple of weeks, reminded us that faith works to remind us that God knows the end of every story and transforms every one of our weaknesses. And today we're going to explore how faith works to affirm our value, to affirm our significance. But before we go any further, let me pray for us. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, as we get started, in Max Lucado's book entitled Fearless, he shares this poem. Check this out. It begins, Perhaps you don't know, then maybe you do, about Stiltsville, the village so strange but so true, where people like we, some tiny, some tall, with jobs and kids and clocks on the wall, keep an eye on the time. For each evening at six, they meet in the square for the purpose of sticks, tall stilts upon which stilt villains can strut and be lifted above those down in the rut. The less and the least, the tribe of two smalls, the not-cools and have-nots who want to be tall but can't because in the giving of sticks, their name was not called. They didn't get picked. Yet still they come when villagers gather. They press to the front to see if they matter to the cl click of the cool of the court of high clout that decides who is special and declares with a shout, you're classy, you're pretty, you're clever or funny, and bequeath the prize not of medals or money, not a freshly baked pie or a house someone built, but the oddest of gifts, a gift of some stilts. Moving up is their mission, going higher their aim. Elevate your position is the name of their game. The higher ups of Stiltsville, you know if you've been there. Make the biggest to do of the sweetness of thin air. They relish the chance on their high apparatus to strut on their stilts the ultimate status. For isn't life best when viewed from the top? Unless you stumble and suddenly are not so sure of your footing, you tilt and then sway, look out below, and you fall straight away into the two smalls, hooey pollui of the earth. You land on your pride, oh boy, how it hurts. When the chic police in the jilt of all jilts don't offer to help, but instead take your stilts. Who made you king? You start to complain. But then notice the hour and forget your refrain. It's almost six. No time for chatter. It's back to the crowd to see if you matter. In his book, Locato then adds the following. He says, ah, oh, there it is. There is the question. The Amazon River out of which thousand fears flow. Do we matter? We fear we don't. We fear nothingness, insignificance. We fear evaporation. We fear that in the last tabulation, we make no contribution to the final sum. We fear coming and going and no one knowing. And while we may indeed fear that our lives 
are insignificant, that we really don't matter in the scheme of things, that we're just a bunch of nobodies. Let's not forget what God thinks. Again, the psalmist reminds us from Psalm 139. He says, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Bottom line, when God looks at us, remember, God likes what he sees. We matter to God. We have value in God's eyes. And this morning we're going to explore how faith works to remind us just how amazing, just how wonderful, superb, and magnificent we truly are. So here we go. Three things. First, faith works to remind us that we're all wonderfully constructed. Again, from Psalm 139, verse 14, he says, Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous how well I know it. Bottom line, we have all been wonderfully made. God took time on each and every one of us to form us exactly the way we are. The color of our hair, the color of our eyes, our facial features, our personality, our blend of gifts and skills, all that makes us unique and unlike any other. God took time, time to create, form, and make us exactly the way we are. And there is no other like us. So yes, we're all wonderfully made in God's eyes. We are amazing in God's eyes. In addition, the psalmist reminds us in verses 17 and 18, how precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. The psalmist is reminding us that we are so amazing and wonderful that God cannot stop thinking about us. If we tried to count all the times God thinks about us, they would outnumber, says the psalmist, the grains of sand. The fact is, God can't stop thinking about us because we were all wonderfully constructed. When God looks at us, remember, he likes what he sees. And in his book, Leaving Home, Garrison Keillor tells a fictional story about a family from Lake Wobegon, Minnesota. He begins, Grace Tollefson married Alex Campbell back in in the 1930s, a man who turned out to be a never-do-well. They had three kids, Earl, Marlis, and Walter. One day, Alex left Grace. Penniless, he was forced to move back home to live off the kindness of folks there, enduring the relentless, I told you so's of her mother. It was very humiliating. But one day they got a letter from a man in Philadelphia doing research on Scottish nobility who asked who their ancestors were so he could look it up. Grace wrote the man back and a few days later another letter came in the mail. Though the envelope was addressed to Mrs. Grace Campbell, The letter was addressed to your royal highness. In the letter the man wrote, Today is the happiest day of my life as I greet my one true sovereign queen. He went on to say that their branch of the Campbell family 
was first in the line of succession in the house of Stuart, the royal family of Scotland. Keeler continues, he says, the line on the chart led right straight to them. Earl Marlis and Walter, the royal family of Scotland living in Lake Wobegon in a green mobile home with furniture donated by the Lutheran Church. They were astounded beyond words, disbelieving at first, afraid to put their weight on something so beautiful, afraid it was too good to be true. And then it took hold. This was grace, pure grace God had offered them, not their will, but His grace. Here they were in their same dismal place, but everything had changed. They were different people. Their surroundings were the same, but they were different. Years later, the youngest son, Walter, finds out the whole business was a fraud, but he never tells his mother or siblings because thinking you are royalty, whether anyone else knows it or not, changes a person. At the end of the story, Grace is much older, and she says to her son, Oh, Walter, what would I do without you? You're so strong. You're so good to me. You're a prince, you know, a prince. They can put a crown on a dog and call it a prince, but you're a prince through and through. They may not know it now, but they'll know it soon. Next year, we'll be in Edinburgh with the bands playing and the flags flying and the crowds cheering. And on Sunday mornings, as we gather for worship, we are among unrecognized royalty. It's no pipe dream. Our neighbors would never suspect it, of course, nor the folks in the other cubicles at work. But we can trace our lineage back to a great king. And we have it on the best authority that one day we will reign alongside him. Peter says in 1 Peter 2 verse 9 that Jesus' followers are a royal priesthood. And in the midst of his great revelation, the apostle John saw that believers are a kingdom and priests. And once we know this, like the story said, our surroundings are the same, but we are different. So remember, we have been wonderfully constructed by God himself. When God looks at us, he likes what he sees. And when we place our faith in the living Christ, we become royalty. We belong to God. We matter to God. Second, faith works to remind us that we're all magnificently cared for. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10. He says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. In ancient Palestine, sparrows were a dime a dozen. You can actually purchase two sparrows for one little penny. The sparrow was the cheapest and least valued among all the birds. Yet, as Jesus tells us in Matthew's gospel, God is aware and concerned every time a sparrow falls and hits the ground. The point, of course, is one of contrasts. If God cares like that for sparrows, how much will he care for you and me? But there's more. Jesus also says that the very hairs of our head are all numbered. Now, I don't know about you, 
but there's not too many. It wouldn't take very long to count my hairs. But some of you, like Christopher, with this beautiful head of hair, it would take an awful long time. And listen to what Locato comments uh, in his book, Fearless. He says, what's more inglorious than hair? Who inventories follicles? We monitor other resources, the amount of money in the bank, gas in the tank, pounds on the scale. But hair on the skin? Not one, not even the man with the expanding bald spots, post tiny number signs adjacent to each strand. We style hair, we color hair, cut hair, but we don't count hair. But God does. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. The point, of course, is if God would go to all that trouble to count the hairs of our head, then he really does marvel over you and me. We are all magnificently cared for by God. Therefore, as Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, so don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And when we place our faith in the living Christ, we realize just how much we matter to God and how magnificently cared for we truly are. And the last this morning, faith works to remind us that we have all been superbly crafted for a purpose. Listen to what Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 2. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Now, Paul tells us that we are all masterpieces. The word we translate as masterpiece means poetry. We are God's special work of poetry, his great work of art his wonderful masterpiece. In other words, we have all been superbly crafted by the very hand of God, but there's more to the story. Not only are we God's masterpiece, but as the rest of this verse proclaims, he has created us, God has superbly crafted us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Here, we are reminded that God superbly crafted us for a specific purpose. The fact is, as Jesus' followers, we are an important part of the body of Christ. We are all needed to fulfill Jesus' work on the earth. Our job, our calling, our purpose is to live by the power of the Holy Spirit as Jesus lived and to love as Jesus loved. So yes, our life matters. We make a difference because God is in it. God has a magnificent plan for your life and mine. We are his wonderful works of poetry, his masterpieces. And God wants to work through us to meet the needs and hopes of others in Jesus' name. We have indeed been superbly crafted for a purpose. The movie Cinderella Man tells the true story of boxing legend James Braddock, played by Russell Crowe, who made an incredible comeback during the Great Depression. Injured and arthritic, Braddock's promising career was cut short, <clears throat> and he had to go on public assistance when he couldn't get work at the docks in New Jersey. But when an opportunity came for him to get back in the ring and provide for his family, he took it, and his world changed. Now fighting with a purpose, Braddock starts winning fight after fight. He inspires the struggling nation with his perseverance in the midst of great hardship. As his comeback builds steam, he keeps remembering the faces of his children and his wife <clears throat> and how important it is for him to provide for them. Finally, Braddock wins his way into a showdown with then-world heavyweight champion Max Baer. 
bear, a vicious fighter, is notorious for killing two men in the ring. In the days before the fight, he ridicules, threatens, and mocks Braddock. And as the world looks on, there is great concern for Braddock's life. When the big day arrives, Braddock's wife sneaks into the lower level of the arena to find her husband in the locker room just moments before the big fight. She marches straight up to Braddock and with a tender fierceness that can only come from a loyal spouse, she locks her husband in her stare for the final words he'll hear before the big fight. So you just remember who you are, she says. You're the bulldog of Bergen and the pride of New Jersey. You're everybody's hope and the kid's hero. And you are the champion of my heart, James Braddock. Remembering who he was made all the difference for Jim Braddock. He won the fight. And remembering who we are, makes all the difference for us as well. You see, the fact is, each and every day as we arise from our bed to greet a new day, God is looking right at us. And while holding us in the palm of his gracious, loving, comforting hand, He whispers in our ear if we'll take time to hear. He says, you are the bulldog of your neighborhood, the pride of heaven. You are wonderfully constructed by my hand. You are magnificently cared for each and every moment. And I have superbly crafted you for a unique purpose. You are my masterpiece, my work of poetry, and you are the champion of my heart. You see, it's true. We matter to God. And if we still have doubts, let's just remember the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Jesus died to pay the penalty for your sin and mine so that through him, we might know just how much we matter for all eternity. Therefore, never forget, faith works. And in Christ, we need not ever fear of nothingness or insignificance because with Jesus, we have all that we need. And if we're worshiping uh, online with us at this time, or uh, for those of us worshiping in person, if we've never taken that moment to consciously and intentionally accept Jesus Christ and believe in Him without reservation as Lord and Savior, I invite us all to do that. Faith works, but the just shall live by faith. And by faith means that we put our trust, doesn't mean just intellectual assent that Jesus is who he says he is. It means utter trust that he not only died for us, but that he lives within us, enabling and empowering us to be the people he created us to be. So if we've never made that conscious decision, I invite you to do that this morning. Simply say, Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, I give you my life. I give up control. I invite you to take control of me. I give you my life. That's, that's as simple a prayer as there is. And there will always be more that we'll want to talk with Jesus about in the days ahead. But that's the first step. And that's where living by faith begins. And now as we conclude this time, we move to a time 
where we're celebrating the Lord's Supper, the communion, uh, uh, the sacrament of communion today. Um, we want to invite you, those of you worshiping online, if you uh, haven't uh, had opportunity to find something to represent bread and juice, we invite you to do that. At this time, for those of us in person, we have uh, uh, the little uh, juice and wafer uh, sets out in the narthex as well as here. Uh, to your left, and we invite you, if you haven't, to just come, help yourself, and uh, pick a set up for you to use. But before uh, Pastor Christopher leads us in communion today, let us join together in our prayer of confession and pardon. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with each other. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, we come before you today as sinners in need of redemption and grace. So much of our time and energy goes into projecting positive images of ourselves. We want others to think that we are strong, smart, and independent. Our desire is for people in our lives to see us as a success. And yet every single day we fail to do that, which we know is right. And we continue to do that which we know is wrong. Forgive us and help us celebrate the fact that you loved us enough to sacrifice your only son on the cross. And as a result, we no longer need to impress you and others. We only need to follow the example that Christ set before us. Grant us the strength and courage to live and love each day as faithful followers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, hear the good news. Jesus knows our every weakness and loves us still. Awaken to the promise of Christ's amazing grace. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to God. Amen. As we wrestle with the idea of being significant today, and we heard Jim's wonderful reminder that God loves us, and he knows us, and he's for us, we still know that our eyes are busy in comparison. We still know our ears are overloaded, our hands can be tired, our hearts overwhelmed. When we carry the feelings of worthlessness, the trials of life, the indifference that comes when we don't feel like we have purpose. The meanness of others when we are overlooked or misjudged, the pettiness of our own judgments, the nothingness that can arise after finally completing something but still feeling empty and insignificant. The constant comparison game becomes exhausting. Are we worth it? Are we qualified? Are we good enough? And when the Lord took his hand off of King Saul in the Old Testament and moved towards a new reign, this new king of David, he sent Samuel on a mission. So how long are you going to mope over Saul? You know I've rejected him of king as Israel. Fill your flask with anointing oil and get going. I'm sending you to the Jesse of Bethlehem. I've spotted the very king I want among his sons. I can't do that, said Samuel. Saul will hear about it and kill me. God said, take a heifer with you and announce, I've come to lead you in worship with God with this heifer as a sacrifice. Make sure Jesse gets invited. I'll let you know what to do next. I'll point you to the one you are to anoint. Samuel did what God told him to do. And when he arrived at Bethlehem, the town fathers greeted him, but apprehensively saying, is something wrong? 
Nothing's wrong. I've come to sacrifice this heifer and lead you into worship, the worship of our God. Prepare yourselves, be consecrated, and join me in worship. He made sure Jesse and his sons were also consecrated and called to worship. And when they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, here he is. Surely God's anointed. But God told Samuel, looks aren't everything. Don't be impressed with his looks and nature. I've already eliminated him. God judges persons differently than humans do. Men and women look at the face. God looks into the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and presented him to Samuel. Samuel said, this man isn't God's choice either. Then Jesse presented Shemama. Samuel said, no, this man isn't him either. Jesse presented his seven sons to Samuel. Samuel was blunt with Jesse. God hasn't chosen any of these. Then he asked Jesse, is this it? Are there no more sons? Well, yes, there's the runt, but he's out with the sheep. Samuel ordered, go get him. We're not moving from this spot until he's here. Jesse sent for him. He was brought in, the very picture of health, bright-eyed and good-looking. God said, up on your feet, anoint him. This is the one. Samuel looked, took his flask of oil and anointed him with his brother standing around watching. And the Spirit of God entered David like a rush of wind, God vitally empowering him for the rest of his life. When the world sees a runt, God sees revival. When the world ignores us, the very person that God created, Jesus brings us close. When our sins and our mistakes weigh us down, Jesus lifts our heaviness when we come to him. So if you are feeling heavy this morning, if you are feeling neglected or overlooked, or if you feel distant from Jesus... If you feel like your mistakes, your, your anger, your anxiety is too much right now, or if your sins are just too heavy, come to Jesus this morning. Come to this table. Come and eat and drink as we find our identity in Jesus. Come to this communion table to experience freedom from feeling insignificant and overlooked. Come eat and drink and have rest in who Jesus has called you to be. Come and lay down your life and give it to Jesus. We remember on the night that he gave himself up for us, he was dining with the disciples, and at dinner he broke bread and said, Thanks be to God. Take and eat this body. This is my body broken for you. Do this often in remembrance of me. And after dinner he took the cup, and again he said, Thanks be to God. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for the sins of many. Drink this often in remembrance of me. So we do remember what God has done on our behalf this morning. We do come to this table knowing our need for Jesus, that we find our significance in what he's done right here. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask that you pour out your spirit on us here and these gifts, that they would be the very blood and body of Jesus, that when we eat this and drink this, that we would be reminded of our significance in you, that we matter to you, that you've called us to purpose. Unite us in your spirit with Jesus and with each other as in the ministry around the world. And we do this all through your son, in Jesus' name, amen. So if you want to take your communion cups at this time, we'll do this in two steps. First the wafer, then the cup. For those of you who are at home, whatever your bread or cracker or wafer object is, this is his body broken for you. Amen. And now the cup. We remember his blood. This is his blood shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. God, we do give you thanks for this freedom and peace through the life and resurrection of Jesus, who reminds us of our calling and our purpose 
and our significance. Help us now to go into the world in the strength of your spirit and give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So now as we shift from worship, we have today's morning announcements and things that are coming up this week. Again, as Jim said, if you're new, worshiping online or in person, we're so glad that you're here with us today. And there's a few things that you can do to help us uh, get to know you and continue our worship experience together in the future. The first is filling out our Connect card by texting the word NEW to 937-563-4593. And when you do that, you'll be sent a link to a digital Connect card. And every time one of those are filled, up, we, filled out, we make a donation on your behalf to a charity of your choice. Uh, another thing that you can do to get to know us and us to get to know you is Pizza with the Pastors. It happens once a month, the second Sunday of every month. Uh, that's the word pizza to the same number, 937-563-4593. We'll order pizza and spend the afternoon together, again, getting to know our leadership and us getting to know you and more about uh, what's happening in your life and so you understand what's happening in the ministry of the church. We have a few things coming up. First is we have a church membership class happening on October 9th. Uh, we'll have lunch and then we'll have child care available. So this is an opportunity to come uh, actually learn about what it means to be United Methodist Church, what it means to be Urbana United Methodist Church. We've been here since uh, 1803, right, Jim? 220-something years, so a lot has happened in 220 years. To know the history of this church and where we are now and where we're going into the future is, is really important. That, but that being part of that membership class is, is a, a commitment to go one step further in your walk with Jesus here at our church. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can call a church office, register by uh, October 5th, so we know how much food or child care to prepare. Also, Kairos Prison Ministry is having that special weekend we talked about a few weeks ago, October 6th and 9th, and they will need 23,000 cookies to pass out to the Ohio's reformatory, uh, women's reformatory. And again, due to COVID, we can't just drop cookies off. We're paying for supplies and materials to make uh, make those in the house. So if you'd like to support Kairos and support this awesome ministry uh, at the prison, uh, you can contact the church office for details or Sue Markley. I think Sue's here somewhere, maybe. Find Sue and talk to her. You can help get information from her. And then last, uh, hopefully you've seen a couple buckets for candy. Trails and Treats is coming up fast. It's at the end of this month. Believe it or not, it is October today. Uh, we are here. And uh, I think we have like 15 vendor or 15 spots filled out so if you have it we would love to get that locked in early um, our goal is always to have closer to 40 spots so if you're hesitant uh don't be it's a great day we've always had great weather it's only three hours and we come out there and pass out candy to around 2,000 people um, but if you can't make it to that again we would love to have uh extra candy so if you're able to go shopping this week in the weeks to come to bring some candy to the church that would also be a huge huge blessing but if you want to sign up you can text the word treats to that same number, 937-563-4593. Thanks. All right. It's been great to be here with you today to worship our God. If you're able, let's stand as we sing our closing hymn together, Grace Alone.
Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for the gift of life. You have given us the gift of life. It's, it's not because we are good, but because you are an awesome God. Help us to remain humble in everything we do so that your light may shine through us. May we become useful vessels that bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name we believe and pray. Amen.